The French fans had to settle for a monogast to cheer for as Charles Leclerc takes yet another pole position in 2022. Welcome to episode 216 of the Grid Talk podcast. My name is Louis Edwards and today we are going to be reviewing qualifying for the 2022 French Grand Prix. Joining me today we have Tom Downey from the Everything F1 podcast. Hello. And Rachel Capusta from the Paddock Pals podcast. Hello. Um, I just uh, wanted to say this before we sort of delve into the episode, but today we were meant to have a uh, Jao Jacob from Hit the Apex Media on the podcast, um, and unfortunately, due to some really unfortunate circumstances, he won't be joining us today and probably not be on the on the podcast for a while. And uh, we just wanted, as a as a podcast, as we talk, want to send out you know thoughts and and love towards Jao and his family uh, during this time. And um, yeah. And if you know, if you follow Jared, if you know Jared, make sure to send him some love, send him some positive vibes. Um, and yeah, this is just from from all of us at Grid Talk. Just stay strong, went, and uh, hopefully we'll see him back on the podcast soon. Um, but to try and awkwardly segue this back into the into the Formula One, um, it was uh, Charles Leclerc who took pole. Uh, Tom that Ferrari. Looking very quick, but he did uh, certainly have some help in his um, in his pole position today. And Carlos Sainz given a, a nice little toe on those back straights. Um, but to be honest, he was already like three tenths clear of Verstappen anyway. I think he would have taken it regardless of if Sainz gave him that toe or not. Yeah, um, I think I think to be honest, Leclerc was going to be on pole regardless because he just seemed to have the upper hand on Max today. Um, you, you know, he's, we saw it through the practice sessions. And we saw it in pretty much all the qualifying sessions today. Yes, Sainz did give him an enormous toe, but given that Sainz, we knew he's going to be starting from the back of the grid, regardless, it makes perfect sense because why would Ferrari effectively ruin Leclerc's chances when they know that Sainz will be starting from the back? I mean, you'd expect any team to do it. Mercedes did it with Hamilton and Bottas in Russia last year, um, although that didn't work out. And and you know teams have done it so many times. You know we've seen Red Bull do it. We've seen you know we've seen all manner of teams do it. And like I said, it makes sense. Um, but yeah, it, it was he just looks not untouchable, but signs just looked like he had it all made for him to uh, signs. Um, Leclerc, I should say, looked like he had it all made for him today. And, you know, he was, he just looked pretty comfortable in the car. Um, you, you know, we always hear drivers on the radio saying, oh, you, you know, it's, you know, it's rubbish in this corner. Or I'm getting lots of windows here in that corner, but he still put together some good laps, some very, very good laps. You know, yes, okay. One, you know, signs to put in that amazing lap in Q2, but let's not forget he's got a fully fresh engine in the back of that car with pretty much new everything. Um, so given Leclerc's components are getting close to the end of their life as well, given, you know, given we're sort of at that point for those components. Yeah. Very, very good. Uh, very, very good, good, good qualifying for him tomorrow. However, I do worry about the Ferrari's pace. Well, I don't worry because I'm a Red Bull fan, but, um, but I'm sure, but I'm sure Ferrari fans will be worrying about, about, about the potential um, performance degradation tomorrow, especially with the tyres. Yeah, Tom, you make a great point of that, actually. Um, as one I was going to bring up to you, Rachel. We've got Max Verstappen lined up alongside, but it does look, what we've seen from free practice, and sort of the general expected pace of that Red Bull is going to be better than that Ferrari. Um, how, you know, Max has put himself in a perfect place to really challenge for the lead. Do you think that he does have a really good shot at the win tomorrow. I do. I really do. Um, like you said, they were having so much trouble. Ferrari was with the tire degradation um, earlier in the practice, and Red Bull just seems to have the edge on that. Um, not not only is it a tire issue, but it's also you know the overheating of the Ferrari engines. And uh, I think I heard on the broadcast. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's like traditional. Traditionally, people have one from pole position on this circuit. Um, and so, although maybe tomorrow might be the difference um, with these Ferraris, um, but I do think, I think the Red Bulls have a really good chance. Um, I, I think Max is going to give him a good old run. 
yeah, I think we would expect nothing less of uh, Max Verstappen. And I think his quest might be made a little easier considering Tom, that he's got his teammate Checo Perez right behind him. Um, Red Bull do seem to have the advantage. And if, you know, they get managed to get Max ahead, then they've still got Checo behind to push even maybe for a one-two. I mean, I'm not trying to push the boat on too much here, but maybe a one-two for Red Bull. Uh, I mean, you'd love to see it, wouldn't you? Or well, certainly I would. Um yeah, uh, I mean, you know, Ferrari are going to be battling certainly at the start tomorrow with somewhat one one hand tied behind the proverbial back because obviously science is, you know, like I said, starting from the back of the grid is engine penalties. Um, yeah, maybe, you know, the, maybe Leclerc might just actually bugger off into the distance. Uh, you, know, you know, it might be a case that he gets a good start, he sails off into the distance, he holds off Max those first few laps, pits early, swaps the hards, or something just to get rid of the sauce because they're racing. Sorry, I'm unable to do that. Sorry, Siri. Hello. Um, <laughs> that was unexpected. I do apologize. Um, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do pit for, um, you know, for, or try and get rid of the soft tie quite quickly. You know, I, I, I said hard to the, the mic and medium because I, did, I didn't see any free practice. I don't know what the race pace is like on those. But, um, but I know Fry, you've got some concerns around that. If Red Bull are going to sort of force Ferrari into doing a certain strategy, they're going to need to do it early because Sainz is probably going to be scything through that field. Um, you, you, know, you know, granted, I don't think he's at the level of like Hamilton or Max do that, or Leclerc do that kind of thing. But he's still gonna, he's still gonna be like picking off back markers pretty quickly. It's like I would expect him. I'm not, I was going to anticipate. I mean, no, I'm going to say I, I would expect Sainz to be. I'd say P15 by the end of the first lap, if not P14. So, you know, so if, if Red Bull are going to do that, you know, are going to force Ferrari, they need to do it quickly. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we have, uh, Rachel previous mentioned that it is, you know, it's, it's a track that's typically one from pole. It's a difficult um, track to overtake, but we know just how quick that Ferrari is and that, down that back straight, it's going to be quick. So um, I expect to see quite a lot of um, overtakes from from Carlos Sainz. Um, but moving on to P4, uh, Rachel, is Lewis Hamilton. And the Mercedes looked a bit iffy in Q2. We were wondering, where were they? They were looking a bit on the cusp, but it turns out they were just using old tyres. Uh, they come out on the on the new set of tyres and have really good pace, um, but probably not as much pace as I were hoping, given that they brought a massive upgrade to this track. Yes, I was worried. I definitely was early on. I was like, oh my gosh, like this isn't going to go well. And then like, even uh, on the Sky broadcast with uh, Ted Kravitz was like, it's bad. It's looking dismal. And then like he was corrected with, like you said, with the tire situation. But I was really thinking that they were going to be able to get maybe in the top three, maybe even on the, the first row, I know, which is kind of bold. But um, I was really thinking that we were going to see something because of the trajectory that they've been on, um, that they were going to do really well and also with this being a smoother circuit and it seemed everything was going to play right into mercedes hand but i don't know the upgrades just aren't working maybe as they thought um glad they could pull it together because i was getting a little nervous for them which would have been a major step back if they if they didn't qualify as well as they or as well as lewis kind of did um but yeah, I don't know what they were waiting for, but they, they definitely held back a little bit until right into Q3. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how they do tomorrow. Uh, it's a Mercedes engines have been very reliable this season. So if if, if there's any sort of blow ups, I, it's maybe not going to come from them. And if if the Ferraris do blow up, if the Red Bulls blow up, then Mercedes it could be great for them. So they, it's been pretty reliable. So we'll just have to see. You've either made the biggest call ever for a Grand Prix or you've given Mercedes the biggest kiss of death ever. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, every single Merck engine blows up tomorrow in the heat. But um, <laughs> I, for one, will not be hoping that happens because my boy, Lando Norris, <laughs> going strong. What? He's Lando fine. No. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Um, that was really awkward to put over my headset. Um, <laughs> <laughs> P5, Tom. It was, a, it was an incredible lap for Norris. They, uh, McLaren have brought up Grace, but given even where Daniel Ricciardo finished today, you've got to say that Lando is driving the socks off that car. 
yeah. Um, so I'm still a bit bamboozled by you just appearing with the Lando Norris hat on your head. Like, I, I set this. I set this up. This has been on my side of my desk since we started. I got, I got my shirt on too. So I, I feel like the odd one out here. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, yeah, Lando again. P five. You know, spitting the Mercs. Um, whether you know whether um, McLaren have brought upgrades or not this weekend, I'm not sure. I think they have. Looking at the yeah. side parts, yeah, I thought so. But again, out driving the car, out driving his teammate. You know, his teammate was on the cusp of going out in Q one. Um. And was never really going to make it into Q3. Um, you know, so it's just, it's just it's what we've come to expect from McLaren, which is not good enough for them. Um, but yeah, you know, Lando again, you know, super driver in a car that does appear to be fairly difficult to drive or a bit a bit uncompetitive. I mean, it's not 2015 Honda McLaren bad or McLaren Honda bad, but it's uh you know they are struggling a bit with the with the regulations this season. So yeah, so Lando, I think tomorrow he's going to get overtaken by Russell. Um, I think that's a given. Um, he might even get done by the Alpine. I don't know, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he can keep it in the points like P8. I think that'd be a good result for him. Mm, yeah, I think to be honest with with the McLaren, it's just it's a matter of getting points. I think at this at this point, it's just making sure that they're consistently getting points and if it's both uh, and if it's both cars in the points and that's a it's an added bonus of course we do have to uh kind of as we are going through these results have to remember that both Carlos Sainz and Kevin Magnusson will be starting at the back of the grid even though I will be reading them out later in ninth and tenth so it's not all doom and gloom for Danny Rick fans this <laughs> um this weekend but we'll we'll touch on that a little later but um as Tom rightly mentioned P6 um George Russell um you might be slightly disappointed that he's starting behind the um, the McLaren of Lando Norris, but he's, as we said, I think the Mercedes pace in the race is probably going to be a bit too good for the McLaren, and there's definitely time for George to um, get back into the into you know fifth place and let's, let's get some more points hits on the board. Yeah, I definitely think George is going to do well in the race. He's going to fare well. I was a little shocked by his qualification performance. It's kind of like him and Lewis did a little flip flop because earlier in the season, like George really got to understand the car, it seems. And maybe with these upgrades, he's just not as comfortable yet. I mean, he did, he qualified well. You can't say he had a bad qualification, but, um, you know, yeah, Lando got the best of him, I guess, in just a little bit. But yeah, I was a little surprised. But like like Tom was saying, I think that Russell's going to pass Norris right up. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, but yeah, I was a little shocked, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, um, uh, to be honest, I think we've seen so many good performances on a Sunday from George this week. Uh, this not, not this, just this week, this this entire season. You know, he's not he's evolved from Mister uh, Saturday to Mister Sunday. Either. I think he can probably get another t- top five under his belt. Um, P seven for Fernando Alonso, Tom, the highest of any sort of French or French affiliated team, <laughs> French driver affiliated team. Um, I think Alpine will be happy that Alonso's in the top 10, but uh, maybe slightly disappointed with his teammate um, ended up, but it just goes to show that Fernando Alonso is still just a remarkable driver, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you, you know, Alonso has a bit of experience under his belt, you know, so he's, uh, he's driven a couple of Grand Prix in his time, so he does know what he's doing. Um, yeah. He's a, uh, yeah, it, it was it was another just it was a bit of a vintage Alonso performance in the sense that it was it was it was just he never does anything you know sort of like simply does he everything's got to have a bit of flair a bit of bit of passion you know about it you know and, and he you know and he, he he did exactly that um, yeah but uh, you know he, he's the highest he's obviously French based you know it's obviously only Alpine and they don't have any junior teams but if you look at the French sort of uh, you know French affiliates of drivers. I mean, aside from the Claire, yes, you know, obviously he's Monogasque. Um, but um, but it's but you know, you know, obviously he's ahead of Ocon and Gasly and um anyone else who's like French related? I, I don't think so. You know, so so you know like you said, you know, he's sort of like leader of the pack in that sense. Um I'm hoping tomorrow we'll get a sort of good old Alonso start so that when I flick flick back through the onboards on on Sky Q I can just see him go absolutely yeet at the inside of someone and then try and get up to to like P6 or something. You know, it's uh 
Yeah, Alonso's very marmite. I do like him, but I do also despise him. Um, you know, so he's uh, you know, it, it'll it, it, it'll be put it this way: whatever he does tomorrow, much like today, much like his whole career, it'll be done with a lot of pizzazz. <laughs> um, uh, I will state I say that I absolutely adore Fernando Alonso. <laughs> he's have done, um, but I'll just. I'll I'll keep that for um, when I'm <laughs> when I'm a, a guest rather than a, uh, the host. Uh, P8 uh, Yuki Sonoda, Rachel, and given where yeah, Gasly is, it's it's not often that we see Yuki perform so well when Gasly's doing so poorly. It's you know we cast our mind back twelve months and we saw Sonoda have the <laughs> qualifying from hell here, uh, causing a red flag, and now in the top ten. Yeah, I honestly didn't even realize Yuki was in the top 10 uh, until like pretty much right at the end. Like I did not even realize he existed in there. Like it was completely out of my mind and I was focusing on everyone else. Then I was like, wait a second, is that an Alphatari? And then I was like, well, it's not Pierre because he got out. I mean, I'm sure because he's French, it would have been nice to see them maybe swapped. But I mean, really good for Yuki. Maybe all the the um, strong words he was getting um, kind of motivated him to do a little bit better, him being a problem child or whatever you want to call it. Um, but th- this was a good result for Yuki. And I think it'll be good for um, his seat and his career just because it's, you know, he's been kind of teetering. Like, will he remain in the team? Will he not? So, you know, he needs results like this. Um, and although maybe it wasn't very, noticeable by the fans watching because he kind of flew right under the radar but really good for him and I we'll see how he does tomorrow in the race might get a little lost in the start you know but who knows maybe maybe he'll just completely kill it maybe we could have he can but he can but hope and especially with uh, in terms of his, his language you can definitely tell he learned English from we're growing up or in motorsport paddocks sometimes <laughs> <laughs> um but, uh, so now we go into the sort of the two uh, two drivers that will be signed at the back. So Carlos signed officially qualified ninth, Tom, but will be starting nineteenth because of um, grid penalties uh, because they've just had to change his engine. Obviously, it's set on fire. Um, but he did a great job today to get into the Q three. I think his the whole goal of this qualifying was for him to then give signs and uh, not sign give Leclerc a toe. Um, you know for his final two runs. I might just suck on you a wine soon, Louis. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's an inside joke that some people might recognise from the other podcast where I got a wine confused with Louis for some reason. Um, yeah, no, uh, yes, yeah, um, signs is always going to be there purely to give Leclerc a toe. You know, like I said when I talked about the Claire, it's exactly what he did. It's exactly what he needed to do. Um, I can't lie. When I saw him set that lap in Q2, I thought mm, a Ferrari maybe going to let him go for it. But then I thought no, they're going to want to do everything they can to make sure that um, that uh, Leclerc gets the gets the uh, gets pole position ahead of Max and Perez and whoever else is going for it. So it was a he's a bit of a sacrificial lamb, but. Um, but you know, but given he's starting on the back row, um, that was always going to be the case. He did exactly what Ferrari needed him to do today. Um, you know, he 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 still made it difficult for the Red Bulls when he could. Um, he gave his teammate a brilliant toe. You know, you know, twice gave him a brilliant toe. And given he knew something from the back, I mean, what more could you ask from him? You know, your P nine is obviously not an accurate representation of his pace because he effectively sacrificed two of his own laps to get um uh to, to, to get Leclerc that toe down into down into the chicane. Uh, not chicane, but you know the down down the back. Is it the Michel straight? It is. Yes, so I, I, I think so. I can't remember I can't something remember French. The, yeah, I can't remember the name offhand. But uh, but yeah, but you know, the point is twice we saw him give Leclerc a brilliant toe down there. And yeah, it worked wonders. Yeah, a nice bit of team teamwork from Ferrari given what's been going on over the last few weeks. It probably needed a little bit of harmony. Um and P10 officially, but obviously won't be starting there. Kevin Magnuson, uh Rachel, and just Haas had good pace. They will go on to what happened with Mick uh, later on, but there was definitely pace in that um Haas to maybe get a bit higher than 10th, maybe challenging maybe the Alpines and the Alpha Tauris. Um so it could be an interesting race for Magnussen tomorrow, starting from the very back, could start really cutting his way through the field. 
Yeah, I'm hoping he can, because that'll definitely be entertaining to watch him do that, especially with the pace that they have in that Haas. Um, like you mentioned, Mick, I'm sure they wish both of their drivers were kind of getting out of uh, Q1, but it, it's okay. And maybe it would have been better if it was the other way around, because he is starting from the back anyway. But yeah, he, he was good. They were holding him in the garage so long, right at the beginning of Q1. I was like, when, when are they going to release the beast? And then he just went in <laughs> one lap and he did a great lap. And then he was just like, okay, back to the garage. Um, so that was definitely kind of fun to watch. But yeah, he was kind of trying to, I think they're trying to like preserve their engines and stuff, was kind of what I was hearing. Um, but yeah. Yeah, not a lot to say, but it's going to see it's going to be interesting seeing two two people fighting through the grid, because a lot of times I feel like it's just kind of one that has the pace that we can watch. So it'll be interesting to see if there's two and maybe they'll kind of team up, get some double overtakes, you know, a little, little team switch up. I don't know. I love the entertaining stuff like that. <laughs> Basically, sign just part uh, like Moses passing the seed for Magnus to just follow. <laughs> yeah, he said, "Thank you very much. I'll take that." <laughs> Um, yeah, so from, from now on, even though I'm going to be saying where they qualified, just sort of take that every single driver from here on up will be moving up, uh, two places. So P11 for Daniel Ricciardo, Tom, um, by all means, pretty disappointing. Um, but you know, on the bright side, he is starting P9. Will he stay there though? Is that, is that the sort of the question that we need to be asking? Um, uh... I mean, we can ask it, but I think we all know the answer. Um, I mean, at least P11 is an improvement on P14, right? Um, you know, it's, a, it's just, yeah. I, oh, oh, Danny, man. I mean, I don't even know what to say. Like, your teammates put it P5. You're not into Q3. You know, you just made it out of Q1. It's just like, it's... It's becoming more than a more than a you know it, we can see a distinct pattern forming now. Um, tomorrow, I don't know if he'll make up that many places because we haven't seen him do it in the past. Especially given you know, you know I wouldn't be surprised if there's a DRS train going down that back straight into that um, into that you know I don't know if you call it chicane or hairpin or whatever turn that is. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he just gets stuck in a DRS train, can't move. Um, and then yeah, and then just has a bit of a dismal day. Um, it's got to be soul destroying for him, you know. And and I, I know he put out that thing the other day saying um he's not walking away and that he's you know he's gonna stay and fight and and I admire that, uh, I really do. But you have to wonder what is worth fighting for if he can't you know if he just can't make it work. Maybe we're seeing. <sighs> You know, obviously at Renault, we saw him struggling in the first season and then the second season, he got better. So maybe we're seeing two elements. Maybe we're seeing that twice over at McLaren because obviously we've had big new regulations this year and it's uh, maybe it's taking longer to adjust to it. But it's not like he's an inexperienced driver. You know, he's uh, maybe he's a bit of a one-trick pony. But he's a Red Bull. So, yeah, so uh, I don't know. We'll see what tomorrow brings from him. Uh, points unlikely, though. Yeah, I mean, we've we've been seeing a whole list of drivers being either signed up for McLaren or testing for McLaren. We had even Red Bull Junior, Jay Hunter, Ruvula, um, Alex Pelot in the Indy series, Rosenquist has signed a new deal. Um, of course, they've got people like Colton Herter who, are, who have been testing or Alexander Pato, uh, uh, and, and Pato Awards, sorry. Uh, Alexander Pato is a Brazilian footballer. Um, so, yeah, Pato Award, who um, are all could take a seat. It's, there's a surprising amount of uh, drivers that could potentially take a seat. And unfortunately, uh, performances like what we've seen today are, are not um, ideal. Um, Rachel um, Ocon, P12, will be starting P10, highest of the French drivers. Um, I think his goal for tomorrow will not only be helping his team get points, but he gets some points in front of his home fans. 
Yeah, even though they didn't give him his own grandstand and only Pierre has one, which is kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know. That would if I was if I was Esteban, I would feel a certain way about that. But anyways, his his driving today, I think that they would have wanted him to do better. He just couldn't seem to get the pace out. In the race, it's hard to tell with Esteban because sometimes I feel like he has really great days where he does awesome things. Now sometimes he's just not on, hopefully in front of his home grandstands and home crowd like it'll give him that energy to really make some good overtakes and finish in the points which would be the ultimate goal for him obviously but I don't know 12 is a little disappointing um in my opinion for um the Alpines and for Esteban but we'll see if tomorrow he's on and he can make his way through hopefully he doesn't get stuck in that same uh, DRS train that Daniel Ricardo will be in. Um, but we'll, we'll see, but I I'm hoping he can finish up in the points. Um, but only uh, we'll have to tell it's kind of, like I said, he's on, he's off. So it'll just be how he's feeling tomorrow morning, I guess. Yeah. Um, hopefully he gets good breakfast. Uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> um, P13, Valtteri Bottas. Um, there's not really much you can really say about the, um, the Alfa Romeos is at home. You know, they've been looking fairly solid over the last couple of weekends, but they kind of dropped off show also completely outside the outside the top ten. Um is there much that you're really gonna expect from Valtteri Bottas tomorrow, or would you expect him to stay more or less where he is? Um no, I expect him to to stay more or less where he is. Um you know, he might he, he, he might he might get some you know, he, he might get some uh, you know, some perhaps performance increase or or, or not performance increase, but you know, he, he might benefit from a safety car or you know from a you know, slow start or a DNF in front of him, something like that. But I think in terms of like positions on merit, I think it's unlikely. Um, so yeah, I can be. I, I don't have an awful lot else to say about Bottas. He just he just didn't quite work out for him in Q three to the uh, Q two for him today, unfortunately. Which is a shame. So I, I do like Bottas. Yeah, unfortunately, it was it wasn't the best, and also Rachel Sebastian Vettel P fourteen looks like he's getting the most out of Aston Martin. Really, um, I don't really know what else he can really do at the moment. Points seem quite a long way off, uh, unless some incredible strategy or luck comes their way tomorrow. Yeah, I'm thinking similar to Bottas. He'll just be kind of staying in the same place. Um, He's really getting all he can get out of that Aston Martin. It's just, it maybe it's a beautiful car. It's, it's lovely to look at, but it, it's, I don't know. He's, it's, he's just getting as much as he can out of it. it. It just seems like they can't make any sort of gains with that car to even put it anywhere super competitive. So yeah, not, not a lot to say about Vettel. I wish there was, cause I'm a huge Sebastian Vettel fan. Um, so I wish I had a lot to say, but not much to say about him. Yeah, this, <laughs> unfortunately, when we start getting this far down the grid, there is very little you can say because there's only ten points placed up to grabs, and the rest, the rest have to scrap for themselves, basically. But at least with the next drive, um, Tom, there is a little bit of a story. Alex Albon um, had a bit of a spin uh, at the end of Q1, caused the yellow flags, um, and. Yeah, he's <laughs> like caught, uh, caused a few issues for people, but then managed to get through to um, Q2 anyway because uh, Mick Schumacher had his lap time deleted. But even then, P15 was the best he could do. Yeah, um, yeah, a few people uh, got a bit sort of done in by um, by Albon's uh, little pirouette uh, on, the, on, on the back straights. Um, yeah, and I got a bit when I watched it, my eyesight going a bit cross-eyed like that because the blinking, um, the blinking runoff strips. I don't know about anybody else, but for me, they they legitimately give me a headache sometimes. Um, so I sort of have to, I might have to watch the race in darkness tomorrow to try and avoid a migraine. Um, so yeah, so seeing Alban spin across them was was not fun. Um, no, he, um, uh, yeah, you know, he, he did well. You know, I say he did well to get out of Q one. He got out because he spun on the entry and in, into into the into the corners that are on the back straight, um, and uh, and then yeah, brought the yellow flag. However, interestingly enough, the yellow flag um, 
was not the reason Mick Schumacher had his time deleted. Mick Schumacher had his time deleted because he apparently went all four wheels off, I think, two and three. Not uh, because the not because of the yellow flag. So I've just read that. And I've just reminded myself. If that's already been said, I apologise. But I was just trying to read it to to remind myself what happened at the back end of the grid, because it's it's sort of like just getting rid of the rubble before you get to the top ten shootout. Um, yeah, that, yeah, uh, Alvin. Yeah, um, yeah. He caused issues for um, for uh, for Gwen Zhou as well. You know, brought out the yellow flag when Zhou was on a good lap, um, and 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 yeah, just. Uh, I mean, it's nice to see Williams into Q2. You know, it's, it's not quite goatee from Silverstone. Um, but, um, but yeah, you know, so whether they'll gain him from it tomorrow, I don't know. You know, I certainly not expecting points. Um, unless he does another masterstroke strategy like he did in Austri- uh, Australia, perhaps. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we, could, we could only... Yeah, see what's going to happen. Um, uh, P16, Pierre Gasly, I think out of all of these results, especially down at the bottom, this is the one that maybe be a bit the most disappointing. Um, yeah, um, as we were talking earlier about Yuki, he's done great, but we really didn't expect um, Gasly to be this far down. It's, the Alpha Tower is not a bad car. It's not a good car, but it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, he had really good pace on Friday um, in practice one and practice two. So, and then earlier today in practice three, he kind of lost some of that pace. I don't know if there was some setup change or whatever that kind of made him lose that. But yeah, it's definitely disappointing in front of the home crowd. Um, I was sad to see him get knocked down for sure, but a little shocked too because his pace looked really good. I mean, I think, I think on like practice one and two, he was definitely in the top 10. Um, I got, I don't know exactly where he landed, but so yeah, definitely a little bit shocking and unsure really what happened there. Interesting to dive into that just to kind of see, I'm hoping tomorrow he can kind of make it through the field a little bit, show his home crowd, something good and get his grandstand pumping. Yeah. Um, I, th- I th- Personally, I think Gasly will be able to make up a few positions. I think qualifying just kind of went maybe a bit against him um, today. Um, P17, um, Tom, my favourite Canadian, um, Lance Stroll, um, did what he does best, doesn't he? Goes out in Q1. Hashtag just Stroll things. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I I mean, yeah, Wiles. I have nothing to say. Um, he's just, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find the words. And for a man who talks a lot of rubbish, I'm really struggling to find the words for for Stroll. Just, oh, just get good for God's sake. You were showing some promise a few years ago. And you know, Oh no, he was Hold just on. so angry. <laughs> he said oh, no. so much so much garbage you can't even roast <laughs> Lance, I guess. <laughs> and Rachel, have you got anything to, uh, to say on, on Lance Stroll? Uh, I mean, honestly, no, just because it's just so it's, it's exactly what you would have expected from him today. You know, he, he didn't he did exactly what we'd expect. It'd be great if he would surprise us for once and kind of get get out of um, Q1. But no, it's, he, he just he never he always. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, welcome back, Tom. Um, yeah, apologies for that. My um, Zoom decided to do a stroll and went out in Q1. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in, the, in all fairness um, to to Lance Stroll, I mean that Aston Martin isn't a good car. You know, we've we've really not seen what we expected from Aston Martin, especially over these last couple of years. It has been a faltering car, and it's been I don't know. It feels just like the entire organization is a bit not backwards, but definitely out uh, just not on it in terms of you look at what you know has been able to do um this year what williams have even been able to do with alex albon this year we've really um you know really yet to see apart from like the odd point finish here and there we've really had seen something excellent from from aston martin uh this year and unfortunately uh we've seen vessel being dragged down because of it and 
it's it's just not it's not great to see, especially when we were all looking for uh, looking forward to Aston Martin coming back to the sport. I I knew I I definitely was. Um, uh, Rachel will say with you anyway for for Joe uh, Guan Yu uh, P eighteen. I think like similar to what I said about Bottas. Really, there's not really that much pace in that out from Romeo for this track. It just it's been looking good, but clearly this track just doesn't seem to suit it very well. Yeah, he he kind of just did what I thought he would do. Um, maybe a couple places up, maybe he would have ended up there closer to his teammate. But at the same time, it, like you said, it's this this track is just not doing great things for the Alfa Romeo. So there's only so much that Joe and Botas can even do. So uh, yeah, not that surprised where he ended up today. Honestly, don't even think I saw him do one lap. I don't even think they showed him on the the broadcast or anything. I is. It, just you know he just set his lap and you know, that was it he couldn't do any better mm, yeah it's um not much to say the um p19 uh tom mick schumacher and he set a phenomenal lap in q1 got himself up to like seventh sixth seventh place before it was properly deleted first as you rightly said for cutting the corner at turn three but you know, like we were saying about Kevin Magnussen, it does appear that this has does have pace. So, unlike last year, we're not going to be expecting him to be staying at the back of the grid. Uh, no, far from it. And it's definitely not a good represent, or it's definitely not an accurate representation of um, uh, of of Mick today. Um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, he, he, he was he was he was on course for a, for a damn good lap, and we saw it in Q one. Unfortunately. He was just all four wheels off the track. I mean, it was the finest of margins, but you know, we've been talking about consistency or the rest of it. You have to give it. Um, I was you know really, really gutted for him because it was, you know, he he did put in such a good lap um to get to get that car up there. And also, like you said, Louis, you know, that that um that has is it's looking quick. You know, it looks like it's got genuine pace. Which obviously we couldn't save them last year. So, so his qualifying today is not an accurate representation of of his speed and that car speed. And it's also we're beginning to see a bit more aggression come up from him, which I think is good because he's been very nice, you know, very all, you know, you very, you know, very sort of like chummy all the rest of it. But you've got to be a bit of a. a, a, a if you look at like some of the best drivers, they always have something about them where. It sort of makes other people go, oh, you, oh, I could, mm, kind of thing. I try not to swear, um, you know, but, um, and, and a bit of that is beginning to come out in Mick, which is exactly what we need to see. So, yes, and he's, he's doing well. Um, hopefully he'll start um, working his way up the field tomorrow. Um, I'd hope so. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to see him certainly get close to getting points. I'd really love, love to see him get points three races on the bounce, but unfortunately, this quality position has not helped. So I'm not, I'm not holding out too much hope. Um, but it'll be, it'll, it's a nice to have if he can get them. Mm. And then Rachel, we come to the creme de la creme of coffee, uh, Nicholas Latifi. Um, yeah, P20. Um, I don't know. Is there, is there anything you'd like to say about Nicholas Latifi apart from maybe he probably should William should start looking elsewhere for a for a second driver? I think that Goat Tifi just let the other drivers have a turn. He <laughs> he just he hang back so other people could have a turn winning because you know it's Goat Tifi. Um, just kidding, obviously, but yeah, it's where you expect him to be. Again, he doesn't surprise us very often, um, but yeah, we'll see who's in that seat next year. I think that'll be a more interesting topic to talk about than talking about his performance today. Yeah, I mean, Mercedes had Nick de Vries uh, doing free practice one instead of Lewis Hamilton this weekend. It could be a telltale sign that he's <laughs> going to get the nudge. Um, but now we've gone through all 20 drivers, so it's time for the predictions, uh, of course. Uh, so, Tom, start start with you. Your podium for tomorrow. Uh, Max, Charles, and uh, Paris. I'm going to be boring. It's, 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 you know, it's a, it's a, 
um it's a it's a legitimate one um the pair lek is the new uh hand bear bot <laughs> <laughs> these days so uh uh rachel um what's your uh podium prediction for tomorrow I'm not feeling very confident in the Ferraris in the heat. And I think Ferrari might go boom. So I'm going to go Max Perez and Hamilton. Okay. Um, see, I was thinking of also putting Hamilton on the podium. Uh, <laughs> maybe the Leclerc's engine doesn't make it to the end, but um, I'm going to, I'm going to go maybe a little bold and say Leclerc will hold on. Um, then it will be um, Verstappen. Then I'm going to go George Russell, my podium tomorrow. Um, and that segues nicely onto the bold predictions, Tom. Um, <laughs> give us your bold prediction for tomorrow. Um, I don't know. Uh, both Alpha Tauri's and the points. Don't ask, don't ask bold or wishful. <laughs> okay, uh, and Rachel? I'm going to go with um, what I said on our podcast earlier this week. Um, all the French and French associated team drivers finish in the points. So that's Alonso, Gasly, and Ocon. Okay. Um, I could, um, could, uh, I'd probably just go with my normal one of Latifi for the points, even though last week it was Latifi to not get lapped two times, um, which just about happened. <laughs> just, um, so. <laughs> Uh, so that is all uh, that is all from us uh, today. Um, if you are watching the um, stream live on YouTube, you'll know that we live stream all of our shows. Um, so, you know, thank you for <laughs> thank you for joining in our shows. And you can leave comments, and we'll discuss them um, in a post. Uh, in our post shows um but if you are listening to this later just know that we do live stream all of our shows and if you want to listen to them you know as they are recorded make sure to check out our youtube channel and give it a like and subscribe and turn bell notifications on so you're notified every time that we go live um and if you're one of the 61 percent of people who listen to our podcast but don't subscribe on youtube please consider a subscriber. We are, we're trying to chase to a thousand subscribers. So if you could do that, that would be greatly uh, appreciated. And if you enjoy the podcast, we'd love to, uh, if you to take five to leave us a five-star review um, on Spotify or Apple podcasts. And if you do, you'll be automatically um, going to our monthly draw to win a grid tour t-shirt from our championship range of merch. Um, we're also available on Spotify, Apple music, Amazon music, Google podcasts, pocket Casts, Omni studio, Verbal, as well as the F1 Chronicle website, so just search for the Grid Talk podcast. Uh, you can also check out the write-up for this qualifying session on the F1 Chronicle website as well. We have a huge back catalogue of shows, so if you're stuck for something to listen to between now and the race tomorrow, um, but we have over 200 shows for you to listen to, uh, including our Fireside podcast, which is a bit more conversational, and we also have interviews with people like Mario Zola from Pirelli and more documentary-style ones, like uh, once by Ayrton Senna and the 1994 Benton Conspiracy. Um, we have a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the uh, podcast with better mics, lights, and recording equipment for all our hosts, uh, any donations are very much appreciated, uh, and you can give as much or as little as you like. Um, and you can get also support the podcast by getting yourself some F1 Grid Talk merch. Just go to the f1chronicle.com slash store. Right, after that's all the way, uh, let's get on to our guests. Um, and... We'll start with you, Tom. Where can our viewers find more from you? Um, I think people know where I'm going with this, but I'm part of Everything F1. So you can find us across all our socials. There's the handle at Join the F1. So that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. I think that's all of them. Um, but to have our YouTube channel, Everything F1. We have our website, which is everythingf1.com, uh, where we do race reviews, quality reviews, um, and popular opinions. Uh, basically anything motor uh, basically if if it's if it's got four wheels we'll write something about it um oh and if it's a race car um i should add um yeah uh 
yeah, I've done a few bits on there. I've got a few more, a few more in mind. I need to sit down and write them. Um, yeah, and then last but by absolutely no means least, we have our Everything Up On podcast, which goes out usually on a Wednesday. Um, it's you know, it's it's a preview review, every you know, all of the above, depending on if if we're on a back to back weekend. Um, yeah, and we also have some good guests on as well. So yeah, please give it a listen. Thank you, and Rachel, for uh, you part of the Paddock Pals. Where can they find some more from you? Yeah, I'm from the Paddock Pals podcast. It's a family affair. I do it with my cousin, Warren. Um, you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, um, Google Play, Spotify, all those good things. Uh, we also have social media accounts on Twitter. We're pad- at Paddock Pals. Um, on Instagram, we're at Paddock Pals Podcast. And then we just started a TikTok. So we're kind of trying to figure out how to incorporate that. So our TikTok is Paddock Pals Podcast. Uh, we do a lot of um not just technical neither of us have any sort of like technical background that we understand so we play a lot of games um and do a lot of just just fun things on the podcast so if you want to see more of that kind of on that side of it instead of like the we don't know a lot of the nitty-gritty technical aerodynamic stuff like that so we we substitute that with a lot of fun games and a couple of guests amazing and if you want to find me on social media on twitter i'm at, at l underscore g underscore edwards um otherwise you can mostly find me on here because i am a semi-regular host so um make sure to subscribe to the grid talk podcast um so thank you for uh, both my guests uh, for joining me today and um t- we'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m at british summer time uh, so until then stay safe and goodbye Amazing. Thank you for the show, guys. Got quite a lot of comments during that. And um, we had the poll as well. Um, so the results that I can see from the poll at the moment, um, uh, it's 38% of people think that Ricardo will be at McLaren next season. 62% of people think they won't, they won't be at McLaren next year. Um, I guess we can quickly get from both of you. Do, you. do you guys think Ricardo will be there next year? Um, I honestly don't know. I can see the argument for either side. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going to say yes, you know, because McLaren would have to pay him out of his contracts, uh, hmm. which is not going to be cheap, especially in the cost cap era. And they might give him another season. Like I said earlier, we're getting used to the newer cars. Um so I'll give him, give him the benefit of the doubt and say yes, but I think it'll be a last chance to loom for him. Mm-hmm. Rachel, do you reckon, you know? <laughs> do you... I will not be giving him the benefit of the doubt, and I'm saying he <laughs> gone. Um, <laughs> I think that it's just frustrating for the team because they could have two drivers in the points. And when certain things happen with Lando, like when he was really sick, like you kind of expect your – other driver to be able to pick up that slack that Lando couldn't do because he was under the weather, but still, um, they, he can't, he can't get a good, good, get a good result. And I just think it's probably really frustrating for their team. So, um, I said, um, we did like predictions on ours and I said that Colton, um, I I can't ever say his last name, hair, hair or something like that yeah 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 yeah. i can't can't get it right um we i was thinking maybe him plug him in there but yeah i i i just can't see him putting up with that yeah we've had quite a few comments uh it's been the main um uh topic of conversation in the in the chat um well firstly when uh, (laughs) me and rachel uh, got out our lando merch it's like he was going, oh, God, where are the Danny Rick fans? <laughs> <laughs> um, they're not on today, J- uh, Jared, unfortunately. Um, and then Rick Falls was like, what's happened to the Honey Badger? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's what road kill at this point. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, it's a good question of what has happened to him. Mm-hmm. I think it's just, his driver's just, it, it, it just, gets a bit too much for them after a while doesn't it, it just you just see the drop off yeah. and they're just not able to compete anymore especially when there's so many 
like Dan, the thing back in like 2017 when Daniel was doing really well at Red Bull, like how we didn't have the Leclerc's, Max was still in his infancy in F1, didn't have any of the Landos, the Russells, you know, the Mercs were pretty much just winning every week at that point. It's, and even then, if you go back to maybe like 2014 when he was doing well, you know, we just come off four years of Seb and then Seb dropped off uh, massively in 2014. So it's Ooh. it's it's weird. It's it is, it is a weird ebb and flow of drivers of whether they do well or whether they do bad. But there's been plenty of interviews. Sky I've been doing a lot of interviews saying like with him, and he's been saying, "Oh, I'm, I'm still motivated." And it's like, yeah, but it must be so demoralising um, every week. Um, as we got as Rick Fall said, I can see Rick in an F2 seat. Well, Danny Rick going to Formula F2. Two. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I can see him in IndyCar. No, I was going to say I can see him going to IndyCar. Or... He seems yeah, to that's... love it in America. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we'll was... take him. We'll take him. He's got a lot of fans here. So um, I I could just could see him more going that route. Maybe even some NASCAR at some point. Um, but I'm thinking IndyCar more. I don't think Formula Two. Yeah, uh, uh, Rick Falls did follow him up um, by saying, uh, it would, uh, would he go to Indy? An individual one said Rick could go to Indy. He'd think he might take a season off to evaluate. Or NASCAR. I think NASCAR is also an option for him. He seems to quite enjoy that. Um, uh, what else we said? Um Individual one also came with Aston Martin should be working on a 23 car now. I would be very shocked if they're not already doing that. Yeah, I, th- I think they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a small debate about Latifi at the end. I always love it. Uh, Latifi <laughs> may stay with Williams because of the love of that. Some money, sponsorship money may start to be getting tighter now. Um, and then Sean's come back with they can't afford to keep Latifi unless he starts getting points. Yeah. So... I think I think I think if they have even brought in someone like Nick DeFries, uh, he's Nick DeFries is a Formula E world champion. He's not exactly going to be. He's got no sponsors. It's not like he's got no sponsors going to be following him around. He's a very talented driver. He's a Formula Two champion. He's F- a yeah. Formula E champion. Like he would seem like the perfect and most logical choice for me. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, and he brings Mercedes back in as well. Exactly. Even when. Williams might be looking to get rid of the, the that um that Mercedes engine for cost purposes, even though we've been saying this for years now, but they might get a run it. That might be interesting. What about Oscar Piastri? Where do you guys think he'll end up? In a seat? He's got to end up in a seat. He has to. I thought he would go with, with the Williams seat, actually, because that's like a likely opening. And I would have assumed he'd be the first choice. So I'm just curious what you guys are thinking. I, I would love to see Oscar in there. It's like, unless Fernando leaves Alpine, uh, I don't see him getting in. No. Um, people are saying maybe at a maybe an Aston Martin if Lawrence does the right thing and maybe gets rid of his son out of that team, or if even if Sebastian Vettel leaves, but it doesn't look like Sebastian is going to leave. So he could have maybe got a drive in at Aston Martin. I think it's a real shame if he does get put to the sidelines for another year because he needs he needs to be driving. Two and years out of competitive motorsports, I'm not going to do him any good if he wants to get into F1. Mm. And it'll be it'll be a crying shame if he doesn't make it into Formula One. But it's like it's it's such a. The, like, where, the, does, where does he go? The, mm-hmm. the silly season is at the moment really silly just because it's like there are so many options for so many drivers of where they really should go like Gasly should have he needs to leave that Red Bull program but he's now signed on for another year yeah and what's he hoping is he hoping for an Alpine seat to to open up um people have also put him on McLaren I'm like I don't think Gasly's really showing that much to maybe get that McLaren seat at the moment I think they would rather go with one of these outside drivers McLaren will go with someone who's already on the McLaren books so Pato Award, Colton Herter, maybe, you know, someone like Daruvula from um, F2 or, you know, something like that. I don't think they'd go with with Gasly. You know, uh, Gasly's not having a great season anyway, so. 
yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky because we've got three, three or four drivers that are probably set to retire soon. You got Hamilton that will probably retire in the next three to four years. You got Vettel will retire in the next three to four years. Um, Alonso, Alonso, and possibly Ricardo, especially if things stay the way up, they're probably all going to be gone. And well, there are there are so many young drivers just lining up to take yeah. those seats at the moment. Well, well, how old is Bottas? He's in his thirties, isn't he? Yeah, I can see Bottas staying around though. Be yeah. like a Kimmy. You just wish there was more seats because there, there's so much talent that you would love mm. to see in an F1 seat. And like, yeah. you know, there can't be a seat for everybody. So there, there does need to be difficult decisions made about who stays, who goes. But there's so many of these F2 drivers that you just, are, they're just so talented. And you really wish that it was kind of like how it was in the past where like, if you win, you're going to get that seat and you're going to get that chance. But it, it just, it hasn't been like that. So kind of, it's like it's just a little bummer, you know. Because yeah. Oscar Piastri, you could just tell he's just itching to get in those cars, and I'm sure it's so oh, hard yeah. for him to just stand on the sideline like that and just mm. wait for it. I mean, he's, he's kept a great attitude, but I, I can't imagine that. I mean, like if if the you know we're meant to Andretti have you know put in a bid to come into the sport. When are, like when are they going to come in? And maybe if you know for an Andretti team, I think Daniel Ricciardo would love to be in that kind of like in that American team, and he would be a great experienced driver to you know at least lead that uh, team into their first couple of seasons, similar to what Grosjean kind of was for Haas. Like he was just that experienced driver to lead them through their first couple of seasons before he then retires. That would then open up seats. And also then you could probably get a young driver in with Andretti. Um, And then if Volkswagen are meant to be putting in a team as well, that's two more seats that open up, but then who goes? Like it is all a bit finicky and... (laughs) <laughs> don't know what to do like, definitely tricky I think to... Daniel would love to be on Andretti but I don't think they would they would put him in that seat like he hasn't proven that when he gets in a new seat in a new car he can do anything in the first season there he's just I, I don't know I just think that at Renault and at McLaren he just hasn't really shown that he can really get grasped with these cars as quick as they need him to to be able to lead a team like if he's the experienced driver he's got to lead the team but I think you just get I don't know I don't know, just hot take, sorry. I do like Daniel Ricciardo as a person. I put that out there. It's just so disappointing when there's other people that I think would just, like, race the pants off those cars. All right, well, it is now just past six, Tom, so we'll we'll call it a day here. Thank you for everyone <laughs> yeah. who, uh, uh, who joined in in the comments. It was great to see everyone in the comments and give your opinions. And, uh, yeah, make sure to join again for tomorrow.